In the state of Maryland, we've operated under a waiver for the last four decades. And that waiver has just allowed Maryland to treat healthcare differently. And, and by differently, I mean, we've got two major state agencies that oversee healthcare here in our state. So unlike other hospitals across the country, we don't negotiate with our payers. The state agency compensates us for that care. So that allows for a lot of things to happen in Maryland that doesn't happen around the rest of the country. Things like keeping hospitals open throughout the state. Things like paying for uncompensated care when uh, community members don't have insurance. It allows for that, all with the responsibility though of maintaining the same high quality care and access to care that the rest of the country is providing. So I think over the last five years, Maryland has done a fantastic job with demonstrating that we can keep quality high, costs low, and still provide access to care for the community we serve. To the fact that we are able to reduce cost of care here in this state. Uh, we, we do see that on the, on the decline, uh, in large part because the biggest percentage of the cost of health care uh, happens at the hospital. You know, about 54% of that total dollar is spent within the hospital setting itself. So when we're able to focus on health and wellness and, and providing our community with access to primary care and specialists within our region, that helps people get healthier. And when you're healthier, then you lose, you use less of that expensive cost of care, which is in the emergency department. It's as an inpatient in the hospital. And when you're using less of that care, you're healthier and the cost of care goes down, but the quality is still very high because when you need it, it's here and accessible within your community. And what I found very unique and challenging, uh, being the CEO here on the shore, is that for the five uh, counties that we cover, from Kent down to Dorchester County, um, every county and every community is very unique with their health care needs. One size does not fit all within our community. And our challenge is trying to identify the best solutions for each of the counties that we serve. And in some cases, like Caroline County, it's a new medical office pavilion that we're building as we speak that will open in February of this year. It's providing access to care in Denton for the entire uh, county, uh, from primary care to specialists to diagnostic testing, all under one roof, while still complementing that with urgent care. So that's one example of how a community without a hospital here in Maryland, one of only two, by the way, uh, can manage to still provide great quality health care to their community through the new pavilion that we're opening. Uh, transition that to Talbot County as an example, and, and we're looking at replacing our hospital here in Easton with a regional medical center. So the process will evolve in asking the state for permission to build, getting all of the necessary approvals, and then relocating our services here from Washington Street to a new hospital out near the airport. So it's that degree of difference between our small five county areas that really uh, is unique, but it's challenging to make sure that we're doing all we can to, to meet the comprehensive needs of the five county community that we serve. And recently we added urgent care to our portfolio. We've, we've got two centers today. The first we open in Denton, actually in Caroline County. And, and uh, you know, that urgent care center sees over 40 patients a day, which is fantastic because those patients had they not had that uh, availability of care there, we're coming to our emergency department for the most part, a more expensive part of the care uh, continuum that's really not necessary. So our Easton office uh, was just open a few years ago. We think the location is great. It really does uh, provide a great uh, uh, care uh, continuum to our region here. We're seeing a little over 35 patients a day here in Easton, so it is beginning to pick up. And, and during seasons like, like now, the flu season, and, and uh, during very, very busy times when hospitals are incredibly busy with healthcare demands, uh, urgent care centers like Easton and Denton really do help put the right care at the right location. So, uh, but it's also the facilities that we're really moving towards replacing. You know, we've got a number of old facilities within Shore Regional Health. The hospital in Cambridge is aging and it's costing us an, an incredible amount of money to keep uh, that building up and running. But we've got a vision and a plan for the future of healthcare in Dorchester County and we're executing on that vision. 2018 was a big year for us to file requests with the state to replace that hospital with the freestanding medical facility. Um, we spent an enormous amount of time working collaboratively with the community in Dorchester County, our elected officials, uh, our, our community leaders, our physician providers, in really uh, crystallizing a vision for how healthcare can be provided effectively on, in Dorchester County and then executing on that vision. And I'm so proud of, of what we've been able to accomplish. We still have a lot of work to do. We don't have all the approvals that we need just yet, but 
If things go to plan, we're looking at putting a shovel in the ground around summertime this year and opening doors in a new freestanding medical facility in Cambridge in uh, the spring of 2021. Chestertown is unique in the sense that it's 35 or more miles away from their nearest hospital. And when the federal government recognizes that as rural, technically, 35 miles or more, uh, I think Maryland needs to figure out how to make that work here in Maryland as well. And, and you know, that's just Chestertown. When you're talking about Rock Hall or Galena or, or points further north, uh, it, it is a challenge. And we understand and appreciate that very much. Um, but we also recognize that as we're trying to reduce the number of admissions in hospitals to only those that are necessary, the number of admissions are going to go down. And as an example, in Chestertown, we're seeing about 10 patients a day on average in our hospitals uh, with an average daily census of 10 per day. It's incredibly challenging. One of the things that keeps me up at night is finding the resources 24-7 to provide high quality care for that few number of patients in our hospital system. And I think with things like the rural study that was conducted several years ago through state legislation, uh, like the collaborative that's, uh, 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 that's come from that rural study, uh, I think not only is there a recognition that there are unique parts of Maryland that really have unique challenges with providing health care and, and that we need to think outside of the box, um, but I think Annapolis is in a position to maybe start to do some pilot studies or start to think innovatively about what we can do in areas like Kent County. Um, so I, I think it very well could um, uh, take some effort from Annapolis and uh, our state legislature and perhaps even our governor to uh, help us identify some, some uh, very interesting and innovative solutions for this and then help us implement those solutions. I think it, it is just uh, once again, the acknowledgement that if we want to provide high quality care to all Marylanders, we need to focus on the unique needs of Baltimore City and of Kent County. And there are differences between the two. Um, but I think it's, it's rolling up your sleeves, identifying what those uniquenesses are, and coming up with some creative solutions that, you know, preserve the waiver, that's, that's paramount for the state of Maryland, but also uh, suggest that there may be pilot studies that we could conduct that, that may make sense in places like Kent County that, that may add additional financial resources to our community so that we can sustain the level of providers that we need to keep our community healthy there, or to help us with uh, a new uh, opportunity, to, a new designation for providing inpatient health care something like or along the lines of a critical access hospital where you know you're not seeing 50 75 100 patients a day in that facility you're seeing around 20 to 25 patients a day but you're caring for the right patients in those locations and you're able to provide the support around the care for that patient to keep high quality care uh, viable in, in a cost-effective manner so I, I think the state is fully aware of of um, the demands that are placed on us for health care, but I think ready to roll up their sleeves and help us figure out a solution for, for challenges like Kent County. Of course, there's going to be ups and downs, and there's going to be challenges with getting to where we need to be, but I think if you have a collaborative spirit, if you've got a clear vision, you know, executing on that vision and communicating is what I love doing. So I appreciate the opportunity to be with you today and, and share that message. But I'm also out in the community all the time sharing the messages with what we're doing. And, and that's where I find the greatest satisfaction is when our community understands the challenges that we're facing, they realize the vision that we have, and they really want to help us uh, succeed. So that's what's important.